something supporting other things based on a predictable, on predictable consequences of an act. In other words, if I do this, I know what's going to happen. The law of gravity, I can stand on a 25 story building and drop something out of the window. I wouldn't do that. But if you drop something out of the window, you can calculate how long it's going to be before it hits the ground based on its weight, based on the density of air. You can calculate that. That's called a law, predictable every time. There is a law of confession. Every time you can predict what's going to happen. Every time. Now, what has happened? We've not made the connection. What is going on? What's going on is people are saying things that indicate that they have no revelation of the connection between what they say and what they get. Now you've heard of this. Sticks and stones may break my bones. Come on. But words will never hurt me. Well, let's prove that. Turn to Proverbs, please. Proverbs chapter 18. Look at verse 21. Death and life are in the power of the devil. Come on, shout me down. That's not what it says, is it? What does it say? It's in the power of your tongue. Didn't say the devil. The devil wants your tongue. Because the death and life are in the power of that. And what we did last time is we studied the book of Job. We studied how Job was blessed above all the people in the East. And here. was the enemy and he began to talk to Job's mind. Job's mind about what's going to happen to Job. Now it says here, Let's go over to Proverbs chapter 30, please. Proverbs chapter 30. Look at verse 32. If thou hast done foolishly in lifting up thyself, or if thou hast thought evil, lay your hand over your mouth. Isn't this interesting? If you got a wrong thought, the next thing that happens is it begins to come where? Out of your mouth. Am I right about it? Let's go to another place. Let's go to Psalms, please. And Psalms chapter 39, verse 1. I said, I will take heed to my ways that I sin not with my tongue. I will keep my mouth with a what? Bridle while the who? Wicked or demons are before me. Satan is waiting on your mouth. Now, as we look at this, let's look at the word confession now and see what that means. Confession. In the, in the dictionary, here's the definition I got. The acknowledge of a crime, fault, Acknowledgement, it probably, I, I should have, I might, might have miswritten that. The acknowledgement of a crime or fault or something to one's disadvantage. Traditionally, people uh, associate confession with the negative. 
confession of something that I've done wrong. Father, forgive me. And I looked it up to find about the confessions and basically there are three, there are four types of confessions. One was a confession found in Matthew chapter three, verse six, that John the Baptist had the Jews to confess their sins before they got water baptized. This is before Jesus started his ministry. Another type of confession is the confession found in Romans chapter 10 and verse 9 that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart that God's raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Now, this is a confession of the Lordship of Jesus Christ that the sinner confess. Some people think that sinners are supposed to confess all their sins. What? No, they don't confess all they sin. The Bible says in John 16, verses 7 through 11, that the sinner is convicted uh, about one sin, and that's the sin of not believing on Jesus. And once they believe on Jesus and confess him, everything they ever did, boom, is gone. Why? Because they're gone. They turn into a new person. A new person gets that born again. Well, if you got a baby just born again, you can't talk to that baby about what happened 10 years ago because the baby didn't do nothing 10 years ago. Here's the third confession, the confession of when we're out of fellowship with God. Something happens in our lives as a believer. We miss God. We step out of line with God. First John 1, 9 says, if you confess your sin, He's faithful and just to do what? Forgive your sins, come on, and cleanse you from all what? Unrighteousness. Now that's not a carte blanche to, to sin. It's saying if you do sin. And not only does God forgive you, but what else does he do with it? He forgets it. So you can't even bring it back up to him. And what people do sometimes is they waste time bringing it back up to God. Well, he's not going to remember it because he just told you in his word he's not going to remember it. And he keeps his word. But you know what you do when you bring it back up? You weaken your own spirit. You feed condemnation in there. And when you feed condemnation in there, faith doesn't work. And condemnation is a disease of the spirit. Forget it. Don't be talking about it every week. With the heart, man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Now, that kind of confession is confessing your faith in the Word of God in Christ. The Greek word for that is homologio. That we, homo meaning the same, logos, or logos, you know the word logos meaning word, but it's spoken. It's something that God has spoken that you agree with. So confession for the believer is to say the same thing that God says. It's to acknowledge that. I'm flying airplanes and the controller says to me, says uh, a 302 Cerro Tango, turn right heading 320 and maintain 5,000 feet. And what happened? I turn right heading, I acknowledge, uh, Roger 302 Sierra uh, Tango, turning right heading 320, maintaining 5,000. Well, I gotta acknowledge that. And guess what? If I don't acknowledge it, you know what it'll do? 302 Sierra Tango, did you, did you copy? 302 Sierra Tango, did you copy? He won't give up. He won't give up until I acknowledge it. Got it? And that's the same thing with God. In all our ways, come on, acknowledge him and he'll direct your path. Okay? Now, I want you to know that the confession that we've learned was confession of sin. I'm going to confession. I'm going so forth. And it's been mostly negative and it's been preached negatively. But it's more about the positive confession in the Bible than there is about negative confession. And what we're going to focus in on is positive confession. Amen. Now, last time we talked about positive thinking, positive thinking, and we've read some of the positive thinking books. Well, that's good. Positive thinking is good. I mean, it's better than negative thinking. But positive thinking alone will not change your circumstances. Amen. 
Okay? Now we will go through that and show you this. I mean, positive thinking will give you a good attitude while your business is failing. While the ship is sinking, it'll make you go down in style with a good attitude. Praise the Lord. Glue, 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 glue. Praise the Lord. Okay? Now those books are good, but that, that alone will not make it. All right? Now, let's do this. Now I've got to make it plain. I don't have much time to mess around with you. Okay. Now, so... Now, this law of confession that what happens with you and I is that we unconsciously go down to the level of our confession. Here is part of the law. No one ever rises above the level of their confession. Wrong confession glorifies Satan. Right confession glorifies God. Now, we've not made the connection between what we say and what we get in this life or what we have. And a lot of times what we thought is that we're telling it like it is. But once you get born again, you can say it before you see it. See, how how can you lie saying what God said? God cannot lie. The Bible says in Joel chapter three, let the weak say I am what? Strong. See, and what happened is we've been trained negatively. We've been trained, unless you see that you're strong, you're not supposed to say that you're strong. But in the kingdom of God, the way that you see that you're strong, you gotta first say that you're strong. Now the Bible says, be careful what you hear. Take heed what you hear. That's what it says. Take heed what you hear. For the measure that you meet will be measured back to you. See, you, a good man out of the good deposit of his heart. What is the heart? The spirit. Okay, the spirit. It's not your blood pump. We're talking about your heart. We're talking about your spirit. Now Jesus is teaching. He's teaching them on spiritual things. If you go to a high school or college, they teach you and train your intellect. Have you, know, have you gone to any college, and this is what the professor says, you are three parts, spirit, soul, and body. And the real you is spirit. You have a soul or a mind, and you live in a body. Have you ever heard a professor say that? No. no. They don't teach that. They're just training your mind. They're just training your mind. Now the Bible says in Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Watch this. Holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be the transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now what is it saying? It's saying that for you to please God, you're going to have to renew your mind to the things of the Spirit. Amen. Yes. 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 I'm talking about be pleasing unto God. Now, there, there are people that think, you know, certain things are pleasing unto God. And, and, and you know, it, it, in, in the church, we have all kinds of ideas. Stuff, stuff that's pleasing unto God. What's pleasing unto God? I was a little boy down there in that church down there in Alabama, I'm telling you, and, you know, about halfway through the sermon, the preachers start winding up and so forth and some sister over here starts shouting. The ushers will know she's going to shout. Some of y'all don't know what that means. That's how I just stay away from it. And, and she, she get up every Sunday. You shout. They have to hold her down and everything. See, somebody think that's pleasing to God. 
Now I'm not talking about I'm not talking about anybody faith, but I'm saying, how about calling things that be not as though they were? Come on now, how about casting out demons? How about laying hands on the sick and they recover? How about reading your Bible once a day? No, I ain't doing that. Do a lot of religious stuff that we call pleasing under God. And that's why the church hasn't gone nowhere. But I like to have a church full of believers. People, people that want to go somewhere. Well, anyway, wait a minute. So in the college, are they going to teach you about the spirit? Well, notice what Jesus said. Jesus said, wait a minute. He said that uh, in John chapter 6 and verse 63, he said, it's a spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profits nothing. Now, why do you say that? He said, for my words, they are spirit and they are life. See, the, the tendency is, is that we think our words are just sound. We think our words are just noise. They're not. They're spirit. See, the good man, a good man out of the good deposit the, of his where? Heart. Heart is not your blood pump, it's your spirit. Your spirit is a bag that holds words. You got what I'm saying? And whatever words are in there, when you come under attack, that's what comes out. What have we done? We've made, we've dissociated what we say with what we have. He said, no, 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 no. Wait a minute. He said, a good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good things. So what's in your life brought forth is a product of the words that you've either heard or you've spoken. You can't afford to hear that Job was being tested by God. The Bible says that God doesn't test any man with evil. He, with evil, sickness is evil. Sickness is not from God, neither did killing of Job's kids was from God. We saw that Job said the thing that I feared most what came upon me. He said, Lord, teach me and I will hold my tongue. Show me where I have made a mistake. And you go places and you hear that God was testing Job. The first thing you do is you open up the door. Religion always gives consent to something that the devil's bound to do. And it opens up the door to the devil. And next thing you know, something will come in on you. And your mind will say, the devil will shoot the thought in. Well, God is testing you. Well, you tested Job. Well, look at the verse that says, lead me not into testing. That's what that temptation means. It said, don't lead me in there, Lord. Take me out of there. Are y'all following what I'm saying? I'm saying you got to take heed what you hear. And the product of most of my teaching is trying to teach out unbelief. It's all over the church. We got to teach this mess out. We got to give understanding so you'll be willing to let that lie go and get the truth of God's word and you'll get something different in your life. Sticks and stones will break my bones, but words will never hurt me. They'll kill you. Words are the most powerful things in the earth. 
Speak them. Get your tongue right and see. And what we said is there are two, two levels. There's a spiritual level, natural level. The natural level of the law is a spiritual law and spiritual law has dominion over natural law. That's why Jesus could tell Peter, come. And G Peter got out of that boat on the word come and walked on the water. Gravity couldn't even hold him because of the power of the word that was spoken by Jesus. Say amen to this. Now, I'm just saying that what we need to do is our words are spirit. That's why when somebody says something to you wrong like that, it keeps going on in your mind. That's why it's hard to get rid of it. Why? Because it's living. It's living. It ain't just noise. It's spirit. That's why you can't sit up in all that mess. Because it's more than noise. It's more than sound. It's spirit. What am I doing? I'm building your confidence in your words. I'm not trying to put you in bondage. I'm trying to let you know that even when we get into this lesson, you're going to see that justing is something you got to watch. Justing. I'm talking about when it's cold outside and you come inside just justing. Say, Ooh, ain't it warm out there? See? Uh-uh. Because you're confusing your spirit. Oh, I'm messing with you now. Y'all done got quiet on me now. See, you got to stop this. I'm dying to go. My feet are killing me. You know what I mean? You got to say what you mean, mean what you say. Now, I'm not trying to put you in bondage. I'm trying to give value to your words because that's a step of getting, the first step of getting what God has for you, which is your promises. And God has these things for you. That's the first step to getting it. You're going to have to believe what you say going to come to pass. And you were never meant or designed to say something you didn't want to come to happen. You weren't meant to say that. You were meant to say exactly what you wanted to come to pass. You don't hear God say, Ooh, Lord, my feet are killing me. God can't say that. You got what I'm saying? Amen. And you got to say the same thing about people, what you want to come to pass. I know they're acting like a fool, but the thing of you got to say, now nah, I'm talking to myself too, you got to say this, you got to say, hey, see that guy cutting in front of them right there? You know he going to come to his right mind a minute and just get right on in that street. Amen. See, you got, well, see how you doing right there? Watch, he going to hit somebody right over that room. See, you think you're prophesying. You go by there and see it and hear somebody. See, I told you. I told you to prophesy. <laughs> and you helped it. See, the devil wants your mouth. He wants your mouth. He wants it for your kids. He wants it for your marriage. He wants it for your job. He wants it for your money. He wants it for your health. He wants it for everything you got. He wants your mouth. And God wants your mouth. Yeah. Now give God your mouth because he's going to deposit good seeds and they're going to bring forth good things. When God said, let there be light, what happened? There was light. Is God a spirit? Yep. Now he spoke and he spoke and his spirit words came out and control matter. Got it? Say amen to this. Amen. Well, see, you were made like him. In his image, come on, and after his likeness, see? And the Bible says in Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, and God said, let us make man, okay? And, and God molded man out of, out of the ground and, 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 and breathed into his nostrils and man